Old Judah, the tribe of Judah, Israel's son, has a compelling history. And I look around and I constantly am trying to pick up the pieces and put the picture back together. But my history is not that of defeat. No matter how bad or how dark it looks. Oh yes, we've gone through some very bad, difficult, challenging times. You see, I am part of the tribe that was brought here to America. I look around at the landscapes of our communities, our neighborhoods and our streets, and I ponder to myself and question the nature of this turmoil. Allow me to clarify. There exists an adversary known as Satan. He is an unseen foe who operates beyond the grasp of human perception. He orchestrates, he schemes, he undermines, he has various disguises to deceive us. He represents himself under disguises of the new culture. It's the new thing, the new fun, the new way, modern civilization. The enemy is invincible. And since we cannot see him with a human eye, per se, he's wreaked havoc on our people. He's infiltrated sacred spaces like churches. I'm drawn to inspire from a scripture, 1 Peter 5, 8. Maintain a clear and vigilant mind. Recognize that your adversary, the devil, moves like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. Allow me introduce myself. I go by the name of C.K., a humble servant devoted to the Lord. I don't like to sugarcoat my words, so my expressions might come across a tad bit blunt at times. And in my roles as a mother of three, entrepreneur, small business owner, writer, my heart finds solace in the embrace of beaches and the serenity of nature. About 15 years ago, I received a divine calling that began me on a journey and a path to Israel. I had known much about Israel, except that it was a state. I was drawn to Jerusalem and to find out more about Jerusalem. And that's when I learned that God had chosen a holy place for him to reside on earth. I declared that whatever 
it was for me to know, do, and be, become, that I was going to do it no matter what. And that led me to Judah. I know that for those who experienced a divine calling or the summons to be at a specific place, you likely understand the profound significance of such moments. Ephesians 2.10 For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but love, power, and sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 in the stillness of the night, a thief stealthily arrives. This adversary enters the scene with a sinister agenda, and that is to steal, kill, and destroy. The catch? We can't perceive this malevolent force with our human eyes. It requires a deeper understanding through spiritual discernment. We're well aware of this unseen foe and the havoc it seeks to wreak. Much like countless others, my frustration brews as I witness the unfolding chaos in our world. Yet this tumult doesn't catch me off guard. It, it's all laid out in the pages of the Bible, just as prophesied. My plea to you is simple. Grab your Bibles and delve into the words within. Disregard any notions of contradiction that you may have heard. It's imperative that you read the Bible for yourselves. The power to discern rests in your hands. You must make the decision to resonate with your own understanding and beliefs. You see, the day approaches when time will slip away, leaving no room for the luxury of choosing your beliefs. What holds your belief? Whom do you put your trust in? I understand some have been taught about evolving from apes and monkeys, the Big Bang Theory, worshiping graven images, attributing divinity to plants, the sun, the stars, and the moons, worshiping the creation and not the creator. But here's my plea. Take a moment to truly think for yourselves. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but love, power, and sound mind. Second, Psalm 4, 1, give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my groanings. Now, Judah, whom is the first you call or cry out to when you are in dire trouble, when death is greeting you, or when you realize you are losing a very important battle? Is it not God the Father? Do we not daily exclaim, Oh my God, O oh Lord, Lord have mercy. We're constantly doing this. And we know by now God has many names because the Bible tells us that. By the way, for those who find it hard to believe, refuse to believe, or simply don't want to believe. The Bible was written by men who were given holy inspiration and divine oracles by God. In other words, like how God chose Moses to write 
the commandments on a tablet. And from Genesis to Revelation, there were men called apostles who were also given God's holy inspiration, divine oracles, to write down what they heard. In addition to that, man, in all his wisdom, could never and will never have the capacity, the understanding, the knowledge to write such a divine order. No man can do that. Man is usually edifying themselves, if you know what I mean. So in addition, no man can take away the air we breathe. A man cannot manufacture air, nor can man make blood. No man can create the sun and no man can write a law that can sustain the frame of life. Worthy are you, O Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power. Moreover, as humans, our creative impulse stems from God, his profound love for us. Think about it, as stated in Genesis, let us make men like ourselves. We were fashioned in his image, albeit in human form, endowed with the powers and gifts, talents and ability. It's crucial to recognize though that while we possess incredible attributes, we are not the absolute power. God holds that title. The adversary Satan employs various schemes to distract us, often camouflaged in the forms of technology, social and political chaos, which are rampant distractions in our contemporary world. The enemy can work through people we encounter daily, although not everyone is intending to harm us. Amidst the chaos, there are individuals genuinely wishing the best for us, some even closer than Ken. Therefore, caution is paramount in how we treat one another. Let me emphasize, my friend, there's nothing ordinary about our existence. Each of us is unique, irrespective of status, history, or worldly standards. We currently stand at the gates of turmoil, awaiting entry into salvation in our world. Our anticipation extends to the return of the Messiah, Jesus, God's Son, who, as we know, walked the earth in human form to be relatable to us. Luke 19.10, For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Jesus stands as the ultimate Savior sent to rescue the world from the grip of chaos. Our reality is ensnared in Satan's influence, a world system where he reigns as the prince of the air. It's important to recognize that while America is a part of our earthly existence, our true world extends beyond its borders, encompassing earth and the vast universe that cradles our planets. In simpler terms, our world is distinct from other planets. I was born in America, though significant is merely a fraction of the larger tapestry we call home. However, this earthly home isn't our ultimate destination. It's more like the Father's physical space often referred to as Mother Earth, designed to house and witness 
the marvels of humanity. It's a compelling humanistic analogy, wouldn't you say? Reflecting on John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Why did God offer his son for our eternal life? It's a testament to his boundless love for us. The greatest love among all things indeed is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Now, let's confront the reality of rejection in our lives. Just as the world turned its back on Jesus and rejected Jesus, it may do the same to you and to me. I won't shy away from the truth, even if it means facing death. For I understand that proclaiming the truth holds the promise of eternal life a gift bestowed upon us by God. His word stands as an unbreakable and unchangeable bond. My friend, it's time to rise to the challenge. Look around, the reality stares us in the face and we can no longer turn our heads. The world is ensnared in deception. Yet many of us are oblivious. We're too often caught in a drunken stupor. Many of us are asleep, drunk, in a slumber. But it is time to ponder the truth. Having eyes to see, but do not see, and ears to hear, but do not hear, Mark 4.12. You've got your own perspective. I won't dictate to you what you should make of mine, but let's acknowledge the elephants in the room. They are the forces that seek to impose a callous, degenerative new normal that disrupts the natural flow of God's order that he intended for men and women. Our elderly communities are enduring great disrespect. The new youths are navigating a path tainted by various cultural lifestyles and practices. Gymnasiums are becoming a place of body worshiping as opposed to gaining great health. Churches transform into grounds for socialites. Yet still though, the essence of the community of the church will remain a place where we should all aspire to gather to. Our government corruption is an open secret and the financial institutions have crafted schemes so grand that it's seamless how it siphons money from you. The food industry has become a joke. The allure of free money is tempting, but it's not free. It comes with a price, especially to those who are caught off guard, who are in the more vulnerable position.
Congratulations, you are now on your way to higher grounds. If you enjoyed the content today, please hit the like button. Or if you consider supporting this channel, there are several links on the description area. Thank you for watching. I am CK, signing off and see you soon. Bye-bye.